excited. Thank you, sir. You're too kind. Uh, I'm telling you I'm so happy to be on stage. I never thought I'd say that. Um, first of all, I do want to say this. Um, thank you, Delta V, um, London Web Perf, White October. Uh, by the way, I love the name White October. I'm a Libra, so let's go. Um, but uh, this has been a fantastic event. Uh, I want to thank you for having me down here. Uh, I've met some incredible people, and I wish everyone would give them a hand for putting this together as well. Uh, so if you want to give um, the good people at Delta V uh, a good hand. So, um, man, honestly, I've never closed an event before, and I feel like I've been waiting for a flight for two days. Uh, a delayed plane, so I'm just like, oh my god, I, I just want to get on this plane already. As you can tell, I'm a bit of a movie buff. I like to make it a little dramatic. Um, but um, I want to um, get right down to it, really. Um, I love being down here. I love London. Um, I, uh, there's something about the city that I, that I really enjoy. Uh, it's very busy. It's very diverse, which I absolutely enjoy. Um, a big Caribbean community here as well. Big up. And, uh, but I will say, the last time I was here, it wasn't really like the greatest experience, because uh, I went for breakfast with my brother, and I remember I just ordered breakfast, and they gave me something like this, and I didn't know what to do. Um, so I really just ate the mushrooms, and I think I ate the toast, and maybe a bit of the egg. Uh, I didn't want to send it back, because I didn't want to insult them. Um, but then I was told that apparently this is really good. So I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> Seriously, I had no idea what it was. Um, and I also want to address the elephant in the room. So yes, my name's Henri, uh, I am French. My last name's not Helvetica. So if you want to leave now, you can. <laughs> uh, I just thought it, was, be, it would be an interesting non plume when I sort of registered it, and, but I didn't realize a lot of people would think it was my real name. So um, that's what I want to say right there. Because basically, you know, you can't trust everything you read on the web, <laughs> essentially. Uh, I just want you to know that. Uh, and it's actually, if you do Google my real name, uh, you end up getting something like this. And uh, I just want to show you I'm alive and well. You know, so I thought that was kind of interesting. But we are talking about the web, um, so let's talk about the web. Who remembers this? Hand up. Okay, just a few of you. I thought maybe a bit more. Okay, we got a young crowd. Let's go. Uh, I remember just sitting by the, win the, the window at the, the, the computer shop, just staring at this. I'm like, when am I going to get my hands on a 28.8? Uh, and I had a 14.4 at the time. And then next to it was a 56.6. Uh, and I was like, oh, man, maybe I'll get that too. Uh, but I ended up getting this thing. Um, I had a good time with it, I have to say. But it was basically my first introduction to the web. And the web's uh, just over 25 years old, um, which is kind of wild because it's like, I don't think I've had a computer that long, you know, or have I? But um, enjoying its 25th uh, birthday earlier this year was uh, this uh, incredible piece of uh, software, uh, which essentially um, charted a new path. And, uh, um, you know, this was basically a quote that is absolutely true. This software is going to change everything. Mr. Andreessen, this was 1993. Now, another statement that came out of that, um, of an interview actually, um, shortly after uh, Mosaic was launched, uh, was this one right here, which said, and Kim Polesi, uh, I hope I'm pronounced that, uh, pronouncing this right, um, very influential um, product manager um, in, uh, in the days. Uh, for me, things started exploding with the invention of the browser mosaic because suddenly the internet was accessible to the average person. Now, someone spot the weird statement there. Well, I'll highlight it. Um, I'm not, I wasn't too sure about that when I heard it, but obviously she didn't know this like 25 years ago, what would potentially happen. Um, I mean, it's a statement that we're definitely going to revisit um, f uh, during the rest of the talk. So. Uh, but they were excited, 65 million new, new users in, in 18 months in 1993, which was apparently a big deal. Um, and uh, if you fast forward 25 years to today, uh, we're just over 4 billion people on the internet. That's just over half the population in the world of this beautiful planet. Uh, and that's online today, which is kind of wild. 
Um, so one thing though that the, um, I would say, the Silicon Valley savants didn't realize would happen is this right here. Um, the majority, I, I wouldn't say the majority, but a lot of the new users are coming on um, the smartphone. That's without a doubt. This is the sort of like preferred uh, device at this point. Um, so many are discovering the net, the web, strictly through a handheld device. Um, some may never see a desktop for a long time. Um, and this, is be, uh, this has created uh, a bit of a friction, uh, I would say. Um, so, I consider this in part um, the shape of the web because the web is being consumed by this device in uh, copious amounts. So, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about the web. Um, so, what do we do on the web, really? Um, I'd say everything, essentially. Uh, what do we not do would be a better question. But uh, we make money on the web, that's for sure, all of us here. Um, we go to the web to manage the money that we make, so we'll say online banking. Uh, but even better, we go to the web to set up some dates. Some of you do, some of you don't. Uh, we actually go get dressed for these dates. Someone might recognize this site. Is he here? Oh, maybe not. Um, and then after the date, we might go back on the web to get another date. Oh, I figured some of you would like that one. Um, we order fish and chips on the web. We listen to a song called Fish by Ghostface Killer on the web. And we actually go look at phishing emails from African princes on the web. You guys may have seen those too. Um, we actually bought our tickets to Delta V on the web. We bought the transportation tickets to get here on the web and we actually bought, we got our hotel on Trivago on the web as well. Ain't that right? Oh, is he gone? Okay, he probably, no, he, he had to leave early, he told me. Um, but the fact is that um, for the past two days, we've been listening to amazing case studies um, of how the web is reshaping everything that we're doing. Um, like Tim and Andy said, uh, I think uh, yesterday and today, um, performance is a little hard, you know, it's not the easiest thing. Um, even, you know, as Andy actually explained, it's like you have to dig through the files and, you know, find like little quirks that, that, that are taking place. Like, you know, first of all, how many people are using Safari here? Hands up. Okay. I mean, I am too, so we're all cool. Um, <laughs> But he went into Safari and noticed an anomaly and noticed that WebP was loading. These are the little things that you may not pick up. Performance is not easy. Um, so with that, uh, I like this quote right here. Uh, I've heard different versions of it, but uh, the web is the most hostile software engineering environment imaginable. Um, it is not simple. Um, I've heard like 80 or 90% of uh, performance issues are coming from the front. Um, it's not a game, as we like to say around my block. So let's look at some more performance. Oh, wrong slide. Oh, it got quiet in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, uh, I was going to use this slide, but uh, where's Harry? Where, yeah, OK, thank you very much for using it ahead of me. But what I wanted to do and say, essentially, is this. Um, this was an important uh, stat that came out a few years ago simply because uh, I felt it was one of the earliest ones from a major company and obviously the biggest retailer, which is Walmart, um, connecting performance um, and revenue. And uh, it, it was one that was discussed for like months and months and months. Uh, again, it was probably one of the only ones, but it was a very important one. And the, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring it up here is that the person responsible for these performance improvements is actually here. Shout out my, my man Cliff in the building. Put your hand up. If you have questions, you want to talk to him. We got luminaries in here, you know, so I want to give him a shout out. Um, and like I said, we saw some case, we've had some case studies here all weekend. BuzzFeed was awesome. FT, obviously Pinterest was a big favorite. Um, 
But you could actually go see some more at WPOStats.com. Again, I brought this up. It was already brought up. But the two curators of this site are also here. Tim, Tammy, shout outs. If you have questions, speak to them. But definitely go to this site to see some more uh, documentation. It's very, very insightful. Now, one thing that I want to talk about um, is, yes, the emerging markets, um, where the next user is coming from. That might sound familiar to someone who's in the place, I hope. Um, these are the top countries with the most internet users, and we're going to look at their uh, growth uh, since 2000, roughly. So, what do we have here? China, India, BRIC countries, BRIC, Brazil, Russia, India, China, Nigeria, Russia, oh, I said Russia already, Mexico. So when you, look at situa when you look at data like this, you have to realize that, and as you can tell in pink, actually, it's not red, and Japan and US, the USA, this is not where your next user is coming from. The next users are the emerging markets. That's without a doubt. Now, um, this is another, another interesting stat. People talk about India having you know, low-powered phones, et cetera. The USA is the second largest market for low-end devices after India. Third is Russia. Where's your next user coming from? Where's your next user coming from, and what are they using as a device? This is the shape of the web. Um, mobile da data is expensive. It's slow. And in fact, it's regarded as, as currency in some of these markets, especially India. Now, I'm going to mention India a lot because this is one of the markets that the, uh, some companies have gone in to deep dive and really get a good uh, idea of what people are doing there. There is no waste for, for uh, there is no data waste in some of these markets. Now, um, another very interesting stat, and I know Bruce spoke about infrastructure yesterday. Um, in India, the average is one Wi-Fi hotspot per 3,900 users. Global average is one over 50. Now think about that, connecting. You might be, these are markets that are basically three and 2G. You're on 3G, you're trying to connect. That's probably going to be like 3G at one bar, 2G at three bars. How about just a very uh, unfortunate user experience? So you have to sit there and keep these things in mind while as a developer, you're putting together your app and uh, uh, other pertinent uh, resources. Remember that slide again? I had to throw that in because once you understand what's going on, you'll see that the average person is not access accessing the web like they can or should. Um, here's another good stat. Many users in these markets turn off data. How will you design or develop for these constrained networks? These are things that you want to keep in mind. And you know what? It doesn't even have to be uh, emerging markets. Because offline, um, essentially, now, um, you may think like, OK, offline is when you're in a dark corner at a club and you can't get through. Uh, you might be, I don't know. Uh, in a basement at your house and you can't connect properly. Or you might be uh, from a different country speaking at a conference and you don't feel like paying the roaming fees. I've been offline since Tuesday. Uh, I'm just kind of scrambling, catching Wi-Fi where I can, walking back to the hotel, checking up, coming here, making my way somehow to the, to the pub and not getting lost. I'm, I don't feel like a special case, you know, but this is a decision that I've made. These decisions are made all the time in uh, some of these markets. So essentially, you need to treat offline not as, not as an error case, but as a normal use case. And this is something that you're, you're going to see a lot more as time comes, uh, uh, times, go, uh, times go by. This is the shape of the web as we know it right now. Um, this is why progressive web apps and service workers have been described as one of the greater updates to browsers in a decade. 
these are things that are going to be possible in the future, especially now. We've heard the news a couple of times. Um, Edge, Safari came through on Service Worker. So we're essentially going into brand new territory. And this is going to be great for us as developers, absolutely fantastic for users as well. It's going to be an enhanced user experience. Now, um, yes, I'm going to throw that in. I, uh, I was dying to get this book, and I finally got my hands on it. You know, and it's kind of fitting because I've been offline for the last few days. So um, I'm going to have a great time uh, reading this book by Jeremy Keith, who's in the building. Shout out. Um, but if you do want to get an idea of some more use cases and case studies, please go to pwastats.com. Much like a WPOstats.com, this is something, uh, a set of articles that have been curated by a gentleman by the name of Jason Grigsby, who's in the U.S. in Portland, I believe. And you'll get a good sense of uh, some of the um, great case studies that have been um, um, documented on this site. Now, um, as I mentioned, and um, I mean, we're going into or the shape of the web. Uh, we're going to new territories, offline, PWAs. Um, yesterday, there was a talk um, about some of the new APIs. And now, the good thing is this. Once upon a time, there was a browser who used to run off on his own, sort of like force some new technologies on folks. Some of the other browsers were sort of like left behind scrambling, which is all good. There always has to be like a leader in the race, right? Um, but as you can tell right here, there is actually some unison now. They're working in concert. Um, a lot of the APIs are going stable much faster than before. This is going to be fantastic for our users and again, for us as developers. We'll be able to uh, essentially ship some of these web apps and know that our users will be able to take advantage of some of these new technologies. So definitely go out and experiment. Um, and some of these um, new APIs, um, I sort of played around with myself. And uh, I actually wrote a piece uh, about uh, the paid timing API. And um, I was sort of like playing around with BigQuery and the Chrome user experience report. Indian, and um, I tried to sort of like compare, as we were uh, talking about yesterday, uh, how you're able to compare um, competing businesses. So I wanted to compare some blogs, some sports blogs, uh, and to see how well they were doing. And that's using some of the newer APIs. Now, um, who follows basketball here? Sort of, okay. This is like American sports blog, so they might not Sound familiar? Um, so basically what I did, I looked at um, five in particular. I started with Bleacher Report, and now this is FCP, which is First Contentful Paint. And I was able to look at how Bleacher Report was doing in um, 200 millisecond bins. And then I looked at CBS Ports. I then looked at ESPN, which was obviously doing a good job. I looked at SportsIllustrated.com. So, so, and then I looked at Yahoo Sports. Now, this is super trivial, it's, not, it's like not a huge deal, but the idea that we are able to now sort of like get a very early look at what users are seeing and experiencing, you could then go back and take a deep dive, which I did, and I'm not gonna bore you with the, the, like the 1500 word piece, which is not really that long, but it's not gonna be fun to read. Um, you're, able to, you're able to go back and really deep dive and understand what is going on in the background. You know, what is making ESPN faster? What is making SI.com a little slower? And you're, as Andy did, you know, you sort of go into the entrails and uh, try to understand what is making things um, as they are. And that, again, is with some of these new APIs. Um, Man, I'm at 20 minutes already. I thought I'd be rambling a little bit more. Sorry about that. That was uh, me thinking out loud. Um, 
there are, these, there are many te technologies that we employ. Um, that's without a doubt. Now, um, I'm going to sort of pull over and talk about the employed technologists in the web. So, I mean, I wasn't really going to discuss this, but I, after I pulled some, some slides out my deck, thank you, Harry, um, I definitely want to touch on this. And, uh, and Dora sort of like touched on it as well. What does this stand for? I mean, we need to do a better job. How many women in here today? OK. I mean, I'm going to say 10. You know, why is that? And I've always wondered. So I'll, I'll be very frank with you. Um, I mean, this is something that sort of bothered me from like day one. and. I'll go out on a limb and say, I understand how women feel, you know, as a POC, because I have my own sort of stories to share. And the one thing that I did in support and also to try to understand is, you know, I went to women tech meetups. Why not? They never said I couldn't. No, but to be very, you know, serious, I would just attend meetups, you know, events. I want to hear the conversations. I want to understand, you know, what their challenges, struggles were. And eventually, you know, in a moment of sort of like mild frustrations, because I didn't like what was going on, I sat down with some buddies. I was like, guys, we're going to do something here. And um, starting in 2015, every year, I organized an International Women's Day event. 2018 was our biggest year. I was super proud. I was super happy. Um, I liked the idea as an ally of creating the environment that they could come together and discuss things. You know, I'd be on the periphery. I didn't care. I mean, I just want to make sure everything was right. This is what it looked like. One year, I had um, Tammy come down. I mean, I think she knows, but I'll say it again. I'm a big fan of Tammy Everts. But I wanted her to be part of this event because I've had a lot of respect for her work. I follow on Twitter. I hear her comments sometimes. I still remember that time she was at you know, the Perf event in um, uh, Holland. And I remember she mentioned she was the only woman there. And I was like, damn. But the fact is, I had her come down. I had her speak to the audience and talk about her career. And this is something that I'm going to keep doing. I'm actually in that photo. I didn't realize it until later. I'm in the back with my hat on, whatever. But the fact is, I decided to become an ally and create help create these environments. What does this mean? All right, let's go. Now, all the ladies in here, everything's love. But you have not seen a grind or a hustle like women in color. This happened a couple of days ago. She was basically leaving her Airbnb, luggage, neighbor says hi, she doesn't bother, she's like, yeah, yeah, whatever, goes to her car. Neighbor doesn't like it, calls the cops on her. Cops come, big hubbub, caught on video, whatever. If you think it's challenging to be a woman in any sort of like industry, be a woman of color, be a black woman, be an attack for your hair.
kind of madness is that? Now, this ties back to what Dora was saying. It's like, what are you going to do to, to, to sort of like reduce the friction? There are ways to get it done. I was at a um, conference last week, and um, I had never seen a forward like this at a tech conference. Like, honestly, I passed this around to all my buddies. I was like, dude, do you see what's going on here? A group of women in tech, black women in tech, regaling together. What's happening? They found a space that was inviting, and they all gathered. And there were more, by the way, and they all gathered together and had a great time. My point is this, you know, we all can do a little something to create the inclusive space. We all can do something to learn. Reach out to people you know if you can't. I know not everyone's trying to take risks. They're like, I remember this one time I went to this women in tech event and I walked in, looked around. I was like, okay, cool. Maybe some chairs here. Someone asked me if my girlfriend told me to come out. Kind of like, apparently I wouldn't have done this willfully. These are the kind of conversations that I think have to stop. Um, what's this mean? I'll say it, juniors. You know, we're in the tech industry somehow, you know, being labeled as beating up on juniors. What is that all about? If you haven't seen this, this was like last week or two weeks ago. You know, all World Stack Overflow finally threw in the towel. They're like, yeah, we're not doing a good job. Especially new coders. I'm just trying to say, and by the way, this is just a recap of the week, of the two days. So I'm not trying to sort of like, but I definitely want to get this out. Um, and to really uh, sort of conclude this, uh, I'm going to play this video, which I think is like sort of like a fitting um, recap of the entire talk. Come on, whoa, whoa, come on, why is this not playing? There we go. So essentially what I'm saying is this. <laughs> what are you doing to reduce friction for your users? Are you employing the best technologies? Are you being disciplined? Are you sending oversized images? What are you doing for women in technology? What are you doing to reduce the friction that they're feeling right now? Are you being understanding? What are you doing to have an inclusive environment. Are you going to make fun of people's hair? <laughs> what are you doing for the juniors? The juniors are just trying to get a <coughs> foot in the door. And they want to become intermediate. They want to become seniors one day. They're asking questions on Stack Overflow. Are you going to berate them? We are the ones shaping the web. We are putting out the product. We are fixing the product. We are improving the performance. We are shaping the web. Let's make sure we leave it in a good shape for the people coming in after us, please. Fin. Thank you.